Greetings and salutations, everyone. This is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Explorers of the Sky, I don't know, I feel like... <laughs> Someday I will actually come up with a full set of lyrics for one of these songs because they're so nostalgic and bouncy to me. But it's kind of hard to come up with properly good lyrics. This is the catch that people have when with the like of stupendium that they hear these music and they do come up with songs for them but it's a lot harder than it seems. Anyhow, in the last episode we did make our way into the quicksand cave but I didn't want to go in there yet. I actually wanted to go and do these two quests because it'll increase our guild rank and considering how close Genghisgan's storage is to selling our stuff on the down low we don't want to do that. Also, I realized why it is that Aerial Ace feels so much weaker compared with Ember. It's because Ember gets Stab. Stab is when a Pokemon uses a move of the same type that the Pokemon is. Usually they give it just a tiny stab boost. They give it a tiny power boost, but in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, these boosts are a lot stronger, so even though Ember might be resisted sometimes, it still actually hits significantly hard because of that stab. Meanwhile, moves like Scratch, they hit for nice amounts of damage, but not nearly as much as with like. Oh, fine. Serena grew to level 19. She's not going to learn any more moves ever again until we evolve her, and that's going to be for a long time. But we keep her around because she's in IQ Group A, and as I've said before, IQ, pay, IQ Group A is good for navigation. I think it was IQ Group A. Either way, I remember it being something significant. We also picked up Mistrevis for also having decent stats for exploration. Her IQ group is pretty nice. And you are the reason I picked up Aerial Ace. Yeah. So something I actually looked at, um, Pokemon gender actually alternates between the floors that you're on. I didn't realize that, and, and I've played this game several times. I've had the Prima Guide for ages, and yet only now did I ever look at the pages that they have the dungeons on and go, hmm, why is there a gender symbol at, next to the floor number? And then I realized the significance. Oh my. That's very nice. So yeah, if you want to get a female combi, you have to make sure that you're on... I believe it's an even floor? I could always just crack open the book again to check. This thing's practically a phone booth. And the first thing I opened up to was Zero Isle South. No thank you. And finally, funny thing. Zero Isle North, East, West and South were in original Explorers games. But not Zero Isle Center, that was added specifically for Explorers of the Sky. Because yeah, why not? It's not as if it was already hard enough, we need to add uh, another version of the... They added another version of the ones that don't increase their levels, but... The, it's one that doesn't reset level. 
but it also doesn't grant experience. Oh, the sandstorm is going on forever. We can... we can learn a new move. Slash versus Scratch. So, this has a hit rate of 6 and a power of 6. This has a hit rate of 7 and a power of 4. This is gonna seem really weird, but I'm fine with not taking Slash. We've already got increased crit rate from being a male Pokemon. But also, I prefer having moves that have plenty of PP, given how much trouble we're going to have to rush through. You know what? No. Ace, this is your job. You had one job. Oh boy, I bet they're going to start up a sandstorm immediately. That seems like my sort of luck. I think now is a time where it's fine for you to have sweet scent, honestly. <sighs> so then, here's the question for you. How do we get off without someone else tripping the track? Honestly, I feel like it would take so much finicking around with our... Uh... Yeah, and Ace woke up almost instantly, so we're fine. Darn it. The traps are getting kind of dumb. Carnivine kind of aren't going to take me down. I'll show you how useful I can be, Ekam. Maybe someday we'll get a nectar. Eventually, Aerial Ace will pick up in some of its own power. If we can get our IQ group high enough, then Ekam should be able to get... Hang on, let me barbecue this guy. So, Ekam's IQ group is IQ group C. IQ group... Group C gets the ability to gain a boost in crit rate with the type advantage, but also I get um, stronger type advantages and type disadvantages bonuses. So Aerial Ace on a Pokemon... Hmm. Actually, it strikes me that most of the Pokémon that are weak to fire attacks are also weak to flying. Pokémon weak to flying tend to be weak to fire, so it wouldn't be that big. I forgot to equip... I forgot to equip the held items after that nonsense we did yet last episode with uh, the Makuhita Dojo. That's my bad.
But either way, it should help out with Aerial Ace, but even then... We have Aerial Ace mainly for its accuracy. And frankly, one of these days I need to go for a run of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon with a Chica Rita hero because... I never realized that they had such a unique starting stat. Or rather, starting skill set. They have item catcher. And I don't have any PP left. I I didn't get out my max elixirs. I guess that's one important lesson for me then. Make sure to bring Max Elixirs to the Quicksand Cave. Fine, we'll pick up the heavy box, I guess. Actually, I think that... <sighs> I'm trying to remember how the... Krogunk Swap Shop worked in original Explorers games, and I think we didn't have those random everyday five-piece trades. I think you had to have all the items of the set found from a box, and if you didn't find them then you were screwed. You just couldn't do anything else, you had to find the pieces that you needed from those treasure boxes. So you would indeed need to farm Combi if you wanted to get your hands on a Nectar Bow. I, th I don't think Ace is that intelligent about his attacks to be honest. way of using the grimy food, I guess. I'm pretty sure at some point, um, Group C actually gets the ability to... I'm pretty sure that Group C will have the ability to... Uh, uh... What I'm saying is, they will not be able to catch or dodge my items that I throw. I'm looking forward to that. did indeed go up, Serena. Well, there goes Sanshrew. Oh, finally. Okay, there's Ariados, and now I remember that I packed a lot of orbs, so 
so I could fast forward this floor if it had a sandstorm, but apparently I didn't need to because Ariados was right over there! And this is the time where it would have been really nice to still have Ember. Okay, Misery, what can you learn? Afflict the enemy with a Shadow Hold status condition. If it's held with Shadow Hold, it's, it can't move. Honestly, not that useful. I mean, I could definitely see it being good on those runaway outlaws, which have given us more trouble than I'd like to admit. But you'd need to have a way for them to quickly catch up with their targets, and by that point, I'd know. Not yet. Let's keep going. It actually strikes me that if we have the ability to immediately leave the dungeon, with our clients, then the as hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I was pretty sure there was a way. They shouldn't we also have a way to quickly leave the dungeon at all times and not just after a job completion? Thank you for rescuing Ariados. Have my roost! Have my jo ooh, joy ribbon! Joy ribbons are nice! Joy ribbons are very nice! Thank you for getting my yellow gummy. To show my thanks, I want you to have my green gummy. We went up in rank from silver to gold. We can now have 320 items, and we got a ginseng. I'm still not sure what those things do, to be honest. I should get some sleep too. Let's take make tomorrow another good day. Now, here's the thing. The joy ribbon means that any damage besides starvation damage gives us an increase to experience. It isn't much, but it will add up over time. Now consider this. Sandstorms. Yeah, especially if you're, the sandstorm creator is a recruit, and you have enough HP to heal off all the damage you're taking naturally. I can see Joy Ribbon grinding being kind of plausible. And we all know this song and dance. Um, next rank would be 1580, so that would be 10 one star missions. Yikes! Of course, the first thing to check is Does Kecleon Shop have Blizzard? No, we have Hail Orbs, Rainy Orbs, and Sunny Orbs, though. I think I'll grab a rainy orb and a sunny orb just for emergencies.
and you can always get the Hail Orb for the Joy Ribbon strategy that I just mentioned. So as I was saying, I might have said it already, but Mudkip card does add up to make the speed scarf. But to do that, you to get the so there are two Mudkip based items: the Mudkip card and the other Mudkip thing, which I can't recall off the top of my head. You take those two things and you trade them at Krogunk's Swap Shop, and he actually gives you a. Um, he gives you a tier 2 mudkip item, which is just the mudkip card plus whatever the other mudkip thing is, which is nice. But then you take that tier 2 thing, you combine it with the two tier 1 mudkip items, swap it at the... or rather you don't combine it so much as you swap them all together, and that gives you the speed scarf. It's quite the mouthful of things to do, isn't it? I don't know whether we absolutely need those Reviver Seeds. Then we can just get them from here, but also make sure to bring a Max Elixir or two. Maybe a Cross Eye Seed. Just checking. Don't want to miss any events with Doug Trio. Anyway, this time for sure we're going to Quicksand Cave. Ready? Here goes Ekam. Now! We've made Ace way too comfortable with throwing his whole what being into that quicksand. What happens if we go into the wrong one? It'd be an awkward conversation in the afterlife, that'd be certain. And now here's a thought that just struck me. If they did remake this game, then it would be by the current generation standards. So that means fairy types abound. I have to wonder. It, they're most likely going to make it a rainbow gummy or wonder gummies rather than the standard gummies, but um I actually do have to wonder. No, 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 let me smoke screen. The thing that I'm wondering is what color would what color would fairy type favorite gummies be? Because we've already covered pink with poison types and purple with ghost types. Blue is for water types. Hmm. Green is for bug types. Grass is for grass types, obviously. Yeah, it beats me. So this is the sort of team I expect I'd want to use when I get to the end of the game and I want to start farming stat boost items. Misery would be in charge of jumping in and out of walls. And uh, Serena would be the one that, that's... Hmm. No wait, actually it wouldn't be Serena, the Pokemon that we'd have 
would be um, Buddy. Buddy would be in charge of it. Oh, where am I going with this thought? Buddy would be in charge of eating items to boost stats. Or at least eating the ones that share their effects across the party because he'd have Nature Gifter by that point. Hopefully. Trip Trap is so harmless and yet so frustrating. Oh, we're already out of room, I should have thrown some of these things away! Yeah, I definitely should have done something about all this grimy food. Um, Scorpi are a grade A hazard to be deleted immediately because they have pin missile. Imagine the dangers of a 2-5 to five hit move, but then also with a 10 range. It's terrifying. Don't mess with it. I believe that Beedrill can also pull this off, so they're also a bit of a red ha a big hazard for you, but there's also that we recruited our own Beedrill, so if we ever really feel like it, we can go get him. Except it was her, wasn't it? Beatrice. Yeah, there's the problem. You saw how much that was hitting for? Now consider this. We had a half advantage against that. That stab pin missile is no joke. Oh wow, those Vagrava are actually worth a lot of experience, aren't they? The fact that level 5 of the Marowak Dojo for the Dragon type uh, maze is actually still more than that shows that the Marowak Dojo can be pretty good for experience grinding. It's just that you have to keep remembering to... You either have to give up on the items or you have to keep back and forthing about it. Silver Spike. All enemies in the room. Oh, Scorpio wants to join, sure.
severe because it does sound a bit like what a scorpion would do to you if you let your fingers get too close. But it's also a name. A name of someone who actually voiced the who the voice actress for in English at least. Um, share with the Buki Miyoda. I don't expect to use severe, but because I've already covered my poison types and my bug types, but still a fun name. It's nice to go exploring. I'm happy to be exploring with you, Ekum. We've come a long way in now. There might be something if we keep going. Let's go for it, Ekum. Till next time, guys. Take care. I'll see you all around.